Frontier Defense is right around the corner, but I'm willing to bet a lot of people have not played the original in Titanfall 1, so today I'd like to cover some basic mechanics of how the mode works, what kind of loadouts are successful, and how to be as effective as possible. Let's get started. In case you've been living under a rock for the past week or so, Frontier Defense is a four-player co-op game mode in which you must defend an objective against multiple waves of enemies. These enemies will increase in number and difficulty each wave, ranging from simple grunts all the way to dozens of nuke titans destroying everything that you love. As a pilot, you've got lots of tools in the form of both anti-inventory and anti-armor weapons, and you've got your jump kit to traverse the map quickly and effectively. You're able to place defensive fortifications in locations that you choose, and you've got, of course, your titan with you to help get the job done. The defense target, the Harvester, is this big tower-looking contraption placed in a predefined location on the map. It's got a hefty shield, but if that gets taken down, all damage done to the Harvester by enemy forces will be permanent. Your job is simple. Kill everything before it kills you and your Harvester. If you do get killed, you're looking at a pretty hefty respawn timer, at worst roughly 20 seconds before you've got boots on the ground again. However, one great thing that the mode did in Titanfall 1 is that when you respawn, you do so inside of a dropship circling the map, and you're allowed to fire your weapons out of the open door of that dropship, so you can turn your respawn into a ghetto AC-130, which really helped you feel like you were still helpful to your team in the first game. I would expect this remains true in Titanfall 2, but we'll have to wait and see. Otherwise, in Titanfall 1, Frontier Defense was pretty simple. You would be given a turret at the end of every round, and apart from that, you just grabbed a lane and you had to hold it down. If you ran Ogres and Atlases, they would generally play towards the middle of the map, where they could soak up the most damage and get the most efficient kills. Striders would play more towards the enemy side of the map, with the main purpose being to disrupt a particular enemy type called the Mortar Titan. These guys sat all the way on the opposite side of the map from where your Harvester did and, well, shot mortars at it. They did really high damage and if you weren't prepared to deal with them as soon as they drop, they would absolutely spell a swift defeat for your team. However, that was kind of it. Just hold your lane, get a good number of turrets to defend the base from up close where grunts like to run through buildings and stuff like that, and it was pretty hard to lose in most situations. Nuclear ejection and big punch were extremely powerful, and by combining the two, you could corral multiple titans together in one big clump, then eject on all of them, getting so much titan build meter you could drop a fresh new titan from space faster than you would hit the ground from your own eject. On maps like Rise, where enemies would clump really hard and a couple of particular choke points, the strategy was almost required to hit top marks, but it's not necessarily to speak ill of the mode. There's always going to be emergent strategies, and this was just one of many that sticks out in my mind from the long time it's been since I've actually played this mode extensively in Titanfall 1. In Titanfall 2, it seems as though things are going to be shaken up a bit since the first game. For starters, Titans operate quite differently now and are very expendable instead of being the survivable and maneuverable tanks that they were in Titanfall 1. Your battle buddies are a lot slower and more vulnerable now, and my guess is that you're going to want to play this mode in such a way that you're expecting to lose your Titan a lot. Nuclear ejection might still reign supreme in a lot of situations, but then again, if you're both slower by nature, as well as having one fewer dash available to you in this game, while also being less resistant to damage by having no body shields, getting into position to set off a good nuke seems a lot less likely. Plus, you only get Titan build meter from the actual kill with nuclear eject in this game. You don't get to build that Titan meter from every tick of damage of the explosion like in the first game. You might put a solid dent into the enemy's lines, but only time will tell if you can simply nuke on groups over and over and over and build enough meter to make that a viable strategy. I don't know what the Titan build rates are going to be like in this mode and how all that's going to actually work, so we're going to have to wait and see. So it's something that's worth exploring, but it's way too early to say whether it's a good or bad strategy because we have no idea how well it's going to actually work in practice. Overcore may, as always, be a really solid bet because in the absence of good defensive options, a good offense might be the next best thing. If you can't keep your Titan alive by playing intelligently with shields, might as well just go full offense and prevent as much damage to your Titan as possible just by killing them faster. You can't die if there's nobody around to shoot you. In all seriousness, I'm sort of predicting Tone to be absolutely standout in this mode. Enemy Titans are going to be walking simple, brain-dead lines towards their objectives, so blowing through them should be a piece of cake for this Titan. 
I think this is going to be the absolute best time to give Tone's first kit a try, which gives double locks for critical hits. On paper, I bet it'll be really good for this mode, because enemy titans are going to be walking in straight lines. Easy crits. You're going to get so many lock-ons so fast. You're going to be so ammo efficient in using your rockets, which are way better damage than your, uh, <laughs> than your 40 mil. It's just, it seems to me like a way, way better strat, a way better way of going about things. On top of this, you have the best defensive ability in the game in the form of Particle Wall, and one of the best and most unmissable cores in the game in the form of Salvo Core. The 40 mil is nearly impossible to miss with when fired against AI, and overall this Titan is probably going to steal the show in a lot of ways, or at least so I predict. Of course we have to give it up to Scorch as well. The area denial in raw DPS is pretty unparalleled. He'll probably struggle versus the flying drone targets, which we've seen a small glimpse of in the trailer and have been confirmed to exist on Reddit recently. Legion also has some really fantastic potential with that smart core giving him unlimited ammo for a good 10 plus seconds. You can kill a lot of things very consistently, very quickly with that Titan, so I think you're going to see a lot of him in addition to this. One thing that you're absolutely going to need, though, is somebody to chase down those Mortar units. We've already gotten confirmation of Mortar Titans returning, as we see some appear briefly in the Frontier Defense trailer. So, a Strider of some kind seems pretty important, or perhaps a Monarch that's gutsy enough to not run over Core and replace it with Turbo Engine. Double Dash, Rearm, and Double Dash again is a pretty quick way of getting around maps, and that long-range hitscan chain gun should do a great job at plinking away the Mortar Titans enough to get them off your Harvester. Then again, if they're like Titanfall 1, then they've got the particle walls and they're just going to wreck your whole day from afar, so maybe it's not the best option, I'm really not sure. But I think that the Monarch route is worth exploring because Ronin is definitely going to be useless in this particular matchup, unless he can sword core his way all the way over to where those Mortar Titans are, and well, now that I think about it, it's actually probably pretty okay, because... Ronin has this ability called Highlander, where if you kill a Titan, you get a lot of your Titan core meter back while you're in the process of coring, so if you can just cut through Titan after Titan after Titan after Titan... Note to self, try Ronin! <laughs> Northstar is going to do a fine job at sniping high-value enemies. Obviously, Mortar Titans are going to be priority number one, but there's a lot of enemy units that are currently still under wraps. I wonder if there's going to be something else coming out that Northstar's unique flight ability might help the team counteract better than any other Titan could. Now, I'm not totally sold on Ion in this mode. There's simply too many enemy targets, and she's going to be a little too energy inefficient in the mode. However, that laser core is insane, so maybe you just play her for that reason alone. Entangled Energy is going to be at its peak performance here, as well as Zero Point Tripwire and Grand Cannon, so experiment and see if she works well for you. Based solely on what I know about the Titan on paper, I'm not expecting a whole lot here, but who knows? I've been wrong plenty of times before, so I hope that I can be continuously proved wrong and that Ion will indeed be competitive in this mode. Now, in order to speak about compositions, you're not going to see teams of four Atlases just mashing damage core in this game like you did in Titanfall 1. You're going to have to have some sort of composition that you make up and run with for the duration of the game, so... I really hope to see some more Strider play, and especially some more Ogre play, in this mode compared to Titanfall 1, because it just makes for a more fun experience, right? So you're going to want somebody heavy, somebody tanky to play on the objective and do that close-range defense against all the stuff that gets through the rest of your team. You're going to want a couple of people playing midfield with their Atlases, so that will be an Ion or a Tone or a Monarch. You want them to stay up in the middle of the map to really disrupt enemy teams, do as much damage as they can, but not die too easily either. And then you're going to want to have at least one Strider playing really far back, just going through the enemy spawn, dealing with enemy threats that are going to be very, very difficult for people on the objective to deal with. So mostly going to be those Mortar Titans. I'm curious if we're going to see like a Sniper Titan, like a North Star kind of deal, if we're going to see any more Sniper Spectres, because I know they existed in Titanfall 1 uh, Frontier Defense, but... They were not very much so utilized at all. They didn't really do much. They kind of just stood around and barely ever actually sniped anything. So I really hope in this game that we're going to see more of those long-range threats. More things that are going to force you to split your attention, to split your focus, and just play a more dynamic, more difficult game this time around. So hopefully that will be the case. 
Moving away from the Titans themselves, there were plenty of hints about more deployables in Frontier Defense this time around, so I think it's reasonable to expect turrets to make a return, but what other traps do you guys think might be available for play this time around? Leave a comment down below, and we'll see who ends up being right come update day tomorrow, July 25th. It's only going to be about 24 hours after this video went live, so make sure you guys are ready to click that download button and get going on some Frontier Defense. Another great thing about being a pilot in this mode is that your ordnance recharges on its own this game as opposed to Titanfall 1 where it didn't recharge at all. So, whenever you're without your Titan, you can always throw some anti-Titan ordnance like satchels, fire stars, or electric smoke grenades and not feel like you're simply out of stuff. You're always going to get more charges back given a few moments and that feels really, really good. Or at least theoretically it does. For any Titan weapons, of the stuff that you have available to you, the Thunderbolt is going to be in its prime in this mode. There's going to be so many targets for you to hit, you're going to be spreading so much damage per shot that a quick Titan recharge should be pretty much assured. Definitely give this one a go with the Amped Wall in order to really maximize your damage. Anyways everyone, let's not ramble for too long. Frontier Defense is coming soon, so grab some friends and coordinate your Titan picks and positions because I'm willing to bet it will matter a whole lot more now the Titans have much more defined roles. I hope you're able to find some success in this mode and if you need a group to play with, I strongly encourage you to check out my community Discord server. We've got over 1,000 members, and finding groups to get into a voice chat with and play Frontier Defense on the hardest difficulty will be very, very achievable. I'll see you guys online when the next update hits tomorrow, July 25th. See you in the next video, guys. Take care.